Music is the girl, Miss Drew, your host is with the most. I'll see you in the next moment. Unique, contemporary, engaging. Introducing the ultimate talk show that captures, scrutinizes, and stirs up conversations around relevant content across the globe. We talk to the movers and shakers in the tech, youth entrepreneurship, creative arts industry, and many more. Join me, Kwame A. A. Opoku, usher you to the realm beyond the headlines new tech releases trends and clicks is going to be a fun ride on ms conversations Welcome back. If you are just joining us, yes, we are live on the MX24. This is the AM Club. And I need to let you guys know, okay, we've been talking about white Christmas and all that good stuff, but it is almost that time of year. Yes, guys, we are counting down to across creamiest festive event this Christmas season, okay? ARC Events, in partnership with MX24, is freezing time to give off the frozen experience, yeah? It is the Ice Cream Fair 21, the freeze time edition. Now, all day and into the night, we are going to be freezing time with your favorite ice cream flavors from across finest, finest ice cream vendors. So you need to get ready for a day full of live music, photo opportunities, giveaways, the games, and so much more of the fun activities that the whole family can enjoy. So don't be selfish. Bring your friends, your aunties, cousins, nephews, nieces, all of that good stuff. Now, this ice cream fair is taking place on Boxing Day on the 26th of December, and you can get a stand now if you call 055 eight zero seven seven four four zero you can also actually just follow them on instagram at ice cream fair ghana on all the social media platforms to stay posted for all of the updates now this is the ice cream fair 2021 like you can't be there if you're not there i don't know what you're going to be doing with your boxing day so make sure you hashtag the time freeze edition is powered by arc events in partnership with mx24 and I mean, now it's time for Lifestyle Daily. And today we're going to be having a deep, in-depth conversation on rebranding the Ghana film industry. You know, gone are the days when we had to walk from our homes to television spots and other places just to watch films. Times has changed, guys. We move on with the time. And generally, there has been an improvement in the Ghana film industry. Ghanaian filmmakers are constantly trying to reach greater visibility by making international appealing films and appearing on international streaming platforms. So even clap for Ghana, okay? We, we be making moves, yeah? We make moves. We're going to get there. But it still seems as though there is a disconnect between the viewers and the movie industry. Now, there's been so many different comments about the Ghana movie industry being dead and how it seems to be stagnant in that department. But, of course, MX, we've got you covered on the AM Club today and we are going to be talking about or having a conversation with the very head of the National Film Authority. And we 
will be answering all of your questions. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. I just love you. I love you too, Amazing. with Dober Bree. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, yes, thank you very much for that introduction, Ms. Drew. And before we get into our conversation, remember, always, you're a major part of the show. We want to hear from you. What's your take on the Ghana film, or on Ghana films today? Do you think we are progressing or we are lagging behind? Please, send your reactions or send your, yes, to our WhatsApp line, 0550 uh, 311 or tweet at us at MX24GH with the hashtag the AM Club. Now, ladies and gentlemen, joining us this morning, as Ms. Drew rightly mentioned, is the very head of the National Film Authority and also chair of the National Film and Television Institute. That is Madame Juliet Ya Asanto Asante. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to have you. Also, uh, joining us via Zoom will be Tony Asankoma, who is a film critic, uh, founder for ghmoviefreak.com, and head of communications at the Ghana Film Producers Association, Mauli Ekpe. Peter, but of course, definitely, I'll begin with Madame Asante, who is here with us in the studio. Now, first of all, let me say that you're an AM Club member. <laughs> I oh, know you don't know what that nice. means, but <laughs> <laughs> we are making you an AM Club member by okay. force. And for me, it's such an honor to be, to be here with you. I think it's the first time I'm meeting you in person. Um, I watched Heart to Heart. I just oh. want you to know that I, <laughs> I watched Heart to Heart years ago. So I know you very well. I watched your movies. So I don't want to say I grew up on your movies, you know, but I did grow up on your movies and watched Heart to Heart. Uh, but let's, let's get into the conversation. Um, our movie industry dates back to the 1920s when it used to be a Gold Coast thing. And, you know, it was for the few, it was the, for the rich and the selected. Uh, but we've come very far. Um, we'll save all the history. But what I want to find out from you is... How would you describe the state of our movie industry today? Well, um, I mean, describing any industry right now, you have to start from the point, you know, from the standpoint of COVID and what it has done to the world. And so the Ghana film industry is no different. Mm. But we can't say that um, every issue stems from that. But mm. obviously that has impacted the sector greatly. Mm. Uh, so I'd say that as a sector, one can say that it's evolving. Uh, obviously the global terrain is changing every single day. Our ability to keep up and, um, and be competitive mm. Uh, may have been challenged in the past, but all of that is transforming. I, I guess I'm getting the vibe that you definitely don't want to sound pessimistic. Mm. Uh, you don't want us to go back to certain things. But let me briefly ask you, before COVID-19, mm. um, I'm an actor as well, so I can relate. Before COVID-19, our movie industry was described as being dead. Mm. A lot of people said, you know, it's not what it used to be mm. when Jackie appears. And I mean, you yourself, mm. and you know, I'll try to venture some few names, Eddie Coco's and the rest used to be the thing, you know, we were in a hurry to, to watch our movies and all that. But let's say four or five years ago, people started describing our movie industry as that. Do you, do you, or do you agree with that? Well, I'd say that, um, you know, globally, if you're an industry, and even if you're a person and you don't keep up with global trends and where the world is going, uh, either in knowledge and skill sets and, put, you know, what you produce, you will certainly be impacted. And like you said, we don't want to go back to the history of things. But if you, if you look at even our ability to adapt to changing trends, you see that we've been challenged. So obviously, yes, um, there have been major challenges. Now, dead is not a word I will use because something that is dead, um, maybe in some cases can be revived, uh, mm. but um, that's more difficult. Mm. So I'd say that you can uh, maybe retrogress or you can stand still or you can maybe not advance as quickly as you, you want to. But if you look on the global landscape, we were not completely silent. Absolutely. Uh, we've been there. Uh, Ghanaian filmmakers have been doing great work despite the challenges and despite the lack of support, structural support and, and funding and, and access to global markets and platforms and all of that. Uh, it's been challenged, uh, but um, debt is definitely not a word uh, I will use. use. I certainly will not be the head of... Uh, 
a dead end street. Absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree. But also, my, um, Madame Yassan, to, mm -hmm. to address our issues or to, to, move, to move forward from right. everything, we need to understand what the challenges were. Right. I think this conversation has been had in different places. Right. But I want to know from your perspective what you think the challenge was. Whatever it is that was making us lag or retrogress, mm -hmm. we need to know it to know how to move from right. it and do better. What would you say these challenges were? Oh my God, there, there is a myriad of challenges. Um, but let me just even take it from one point of view of marketing and distribution. And I say this as myself being an industry player and a filmmaker. Mm. Uh, as a creative person, when you do your work uh, and you focus on the creative process, it's not your place to now go and market it and distribute it. But hang on, look at the entire continent of Africa. Mm. You have less than three major distributors, global distributors on the continent. We are talking about the entire continent. And so if you do your work, how do you even sell it? Because, you know, it's like, let me just bring it down to a farmer. A farmer is great, produces his tomatoes and all that. If the route to market is not clear, if there's no transportation to the market, if the market is not there, then that tomato will rot. And, and film being a product is no different. And so if a filmmaker makes his, his work and the access to the market or the route to the market is, you know, challenged, then it's a big problem. Um, you know, you can come into other issues like funding, which is, you know, a huge um, uh, problem because if you look at the kind of content uh, which is on major platforms and you look at the budget lines, mm. um, you will see that the lowest budget may not even be our highest budget. And so then, you know, obviously when the budget is, is low, it impacts things like quality, the kinds of cast, and simple soft things like characterization, costuming, things that, you know, you may not put a handle on. But if you're watching a film and you're watching a good film, even if the story... Uh, let's just say two stories being the same, but you look at other production values like say you're describing a rich person You know, there's things that appeal to your senses like textures and costumes and colors and designs and stuff like that And that can easily make you tell a rich person from someone who mm. is a wannabe mm. And let's just say that our films in some on some cases have been wannabes <laughs> What a description um, I guess and in this case, if we were to compare our industry, I guess mm. the closest people to compare our industry to mm. will be Nigeria. Right. Now, I do understand the argument when it comes to numbers, mm -hmm. because Nigeria is the second largest economy in Africa. Right. So definitely, um, we may not be able to compete with them uh, when it comes to certain things. But we've also seen how the um, Nigerian industry has grown over the years. Right. Remember how we used to do collaborations right. and stuff, but over the years, we've seen them grow. So when, you, when, you, when you're with somebody and you're almost at the same level mm. and then suddenly you see them just shoot up, mm. you, want, you wonder what happened what, what to you. What went wrong, yes, yeah. What happened to you guys or what will happen to me? Right. Um, in our case, is it a case of the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken when it comes to the challenges you just mentioned? Because people will say funding, mm. marketing and distribution, but mm. like you said, others will say, well, you don't give good content, so mm. we can't sell it out there. So mm. is it the fact that we weren't producing appealing content mm. or it was a case of we do, but we don't have the distributors to, to sell it to the world? It's a contribution of all. And you know, the Nigerian dynamic is interesting and sometimes I caution a direct comparison. Being that, first of all, let's just step back and acknowledge that even the Nigerian industry was propelled by Ghana. Mm. You know, when you were introducing me, you said I'm the chair of the, you know, of the National Film Tourist. and Television Institute, which is one of the biggest and um, longest existing film schools, you know, on the continent. And, um, you know, graduates from that school were very instrumental. And, and Ghanaians in general, Ghanaian filmmakers were very instrumental in, in the Nigerian market taking off. But then if you look at Nigeria, I mean, Nigeria... First of all, if you do a product, you need a market. Nigeria, in its, on its own, is a market on, on, on its own. So if I make a film in Nigeria, uh, if I sell that film, market that film properly, I really can make my money in Nigeria. Uh, and then you, you look at the dynamic of Ghana, which is about 35 million people. So you're comparing, uh, com you know, comparatively to Nigeria, mm. um, which is over 300 million people. But, but here is the thing. The recent um, 
UNESCO report that just came out, which is the most conclusive report on the continent, um, on, on the film and audiovisual sector. And we are so glad uh, to have that report because one of the things we haven't invested in is research and you know data is necessary to make a uh, decision whether it's from policy or even as an investor you need data and we lack that data so that's a major problem mm. but even if you look at uh, the UNESCO report you see that West Africa is the most prolific uh, segment of, of the sector on the continent and within that uh, West Africa there's Nigeria followed closely by Ghana mm. now Nigeria makes roughly about 400 uh, films, if I'm, if I'm remembering, no, about 3,000 or so films per annum, if mm. I'm remembering the mm. numbers correctly. And Ghana makes uh, close to 500 uh, films, uh, uh, you know, uh, per annum, if, if I remember correctly. If you do the ratio of 30, uh, 35 million people to 300 million people, we are not that bad. <laughs> you know, if you look at the numbers in that way. Um, uh, bec but then, obviously, Nigeria made a conscious effort. Um, one, obviously, the market is there, but there was funding, uh, you know, that went towards the sector. There was policy intervention, you know, deliberate policy intervention. Uh, there were strategic interventions. Um, but, you know, Ghana has done a good job. Ghana now has the, the you know, the, the National Film Authority, mm. which is a good step forward. Mm. In fact, if mm. you look at, again, going back to the UNESCO report, all of the, the steps that are recommended, uh, because in the UNESCO report, is interesting, right now the sector is employing 5 million people and contributing mm. 5 billion. Over the continent. Over the continent. But the opportunity that we are not uh, taking advantage of is that the sector can employ 20 billion uh, 20 million people and bring 20 billion to Africa so that's a huge number especially for a country and a continent that is looking to create jobs and opportunities and, and all that but what I was saying was that if you look at most of the recommendations in fact almost 90 nine percent of the recommendations in the report Ghana is taking steps uh, or has taken steps in that direction including having a film commission and other things we are doing so you know it's a, just a matter of time and I don't negate um, the chicken and the egg situation mm. that you painted but you know the important thing is that we are taking steps uh, towards uh, transformation. Wonderful. Uh, well elaborated. And I uh, will talk about moving forward and what it is the NFA is doing to improve the movie industry. But let me go over to Zoom and speak with Tony Asankuma uh, and let's take his view on that as well. Good morning, Tony. Yeah, good morning, uh, Godwin, and good morning to the uh, viewers as well. I'm sure you've been patiently waiting to <laughs> express yourself <laughs> yes, on, yeah. on, the, on this particular yes, topic. Um, but Tony, uh, yes, about that. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Very interesting conversation uh, going on. Um, Madame Juliet is always um, up to the tax when it comes to speaking about matters about the Ghanaian uh, film industry. And she paints a very perfect picture of the current state of the industry. So, yeah, very informative. Right. And um, so what is your overview generally? Um, let's consider COVID-19. Let's consider the last five, ten years. What is your general overview of our movie industry today? And let's consider what the NFA has been doing, which Madame Juliet will elaborate shortly. What is your general overview of our industry today? Because you run a platform that four or five years ago wasn't, wasn't there. You know, GH Movie Freak criti um, <laughs> critiquing movies, wow. which is a good step. You know, so what is your overview? Okay, so uh, ghmoviefreak.com is actually um, seven years going into eight years now. My, so my, we've my been mind. around for quite a long time. My. Yes, um, we've been able to um, take a good look at uh, the, the film industry. So when we contribute to such conversations, we know what we are talking about. I think first of all, I would agree with um, um, Madam Juliet that uh, the film industry is not dead. We should never push that narrative. I think if anything at all, I like to say that the Ghanaian film industry is evolving. And that evolution, everything that's happening now is part of that evolution process where we are going to see a lot more uh, productions, quality productions. You are going to see more bigger capital investments into the industry. But let's not take away uh, the fact that when COVID hit, it affected the film industry worldwide. It's not just Ghana. Across the globe, several films that were going to be blockbuster hits had to be put on the back burner, waiting for the pandemic 
to uh, blow over. So it's not just Ghana that has been affected by the pandemic. But that notwithstanding, I believe that it's not too late for us to turn things around. Personally, I felt like 2020 was actually going to be the year for the Ghanaian film industry because I was privy to some amazing film projects that were uh, going to be released within that year and also in 2021. But unfortunately, no one expected COVID. It's true. But Tony, sorry, let me let me let me cut because of time. Um, so that Madame Judas can educate us on the rebranding of the moving industry. But um, to, oh goodness, I just my question just escaped me. Whatever I was going to ask, <laughs> is it lucrative? Honestly, um, Madame Judas, when she was talking, the question on my mind was: Do we patronize our staff in the first place? Because we talk about Nigeria and their markets and distribution and Netflix and all that. But do Ghanaians actually love? what Ghanaians do and do we patronize it? Is the film industry lucrative in the first place? I think um, it, can, it can be better. Um, I'd say that over the years, uh, my observation has been that we seem to have lost uh, the cinema culture. And one of the things I've been passionate about with GH Movie Freak and even with our, our subsidiary events, GH Movie Con, is to help revive the cinema culture. I believe the business of filmmaking or the 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 profits of filmmaking starts from getting people to actually go and buy and watch films or go to the cinemas, pay money to watch films. And over the years, we have lost that cinema culture. Although it's as though um, in recent times, we are seeing a lot more people going to the cinemas, but it could be better. I think once we are able to get more people interested in going to the cinemas, getting more cinemas, then we will begin to see um, profits as we want to see because every film industry is judged or is valued by how much money comes out of it. When you hear, when you hear um, people talking about Hollywood or Bollywood, the conversation always leads back to how much money is being made in the cinemas, how much money is being, is being made, uh, the box office numbers. That's what determines basically how successful a film is. Mm. So I think we are on the right track at um, reviving the cinema culture. It will take more work. It will take a collaborative effort from all of us as creatives or as uh, film enthusiasts or as people that love the Ghanaian film industry to make it work. And I believe that in the next couple of years, we are going to see the profit that we need to see from the Ghanaian film industry. Amen to that, Tony. Amen to that. But uh, let's, so we'll move away from, okay, the past and look forward to this bright future that is being painted for all of us as creative artists. Now, and to, I don't even want to talk about how Netflix has pumped money into the Nigeria, into Nollywood. In 2020, they pumped a lot of money into Nollywood. And I'm sure you've seen the promo, the Nollywood promo. Madam Juliet, you've seen it? Yes. Tony, you have seen it as well. Uh, the promo of Nigeria or Nollywood on Netflix. Now, moving forward, rebranding the Ghana movie industry. Madam Yasan to Asante, could you tell us a little bit about this rebranding, what it entails? Um, I know tonight we'll be unveiling the new name for... Will you, will, you, will you let us know here? Or <laughs> you're unveiling it's the not name my job to, do, to that. do that. The chair of the committee will, will, will Wonderful. unveil it. Yes. Wonderful. So you tell us about the rebranding, what it entails, and really, really, really what it's going to do for us uh, right. as a sector, right. as an industry. Uh, before I go into that, I want to pick up on something Tony mentioned, which is so key. Uh, just to give you again some numbers. If you look at um, the, the, line, the line of uh, reference, the U.S. being the, 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 the most uh, advanced mm -hmm. uh, in the sector and Africa being the least. In the U.S., you have about 7,000 people to one screen. In the entirety of Africa, you have less than 1,000 screens to over a billion people. Uh, in Ghana, you know that you know how many cinemas we have and how many screens we have, less than 20. Uh, and that's me being very charitable for people, uh, people of over 35 million. And so those real structural deficiencies cannot be overlooked. Uh, so I just wanted to <laughs> make that point. It's, and when I hear that, it uh -huh. just takes me back to the NPP's manifesto. I'm sorry right. to bring that, this mm. up. 
prior to Nanado's assuming of power, right. how they promised that we're going to have places like a national theater in every region in right. this country. And we thought that was okay. That was a good step right. to solving this problem you're talking right. about. But that's that's well, I'm not here to talk to about, talk about that. manifesto. So let's, you know, let's I talk about what I know about. Let's move away from um, that. Yeah. And you know, anyone who understands marketing and branding understands the relevance of that. First of all, um, you know, one can go back into the references that we've referenced the film sector by. Obviously, uh, the film sector, if you go into any country, the film sector is the sector of the country. So the Nigerian film industry, the Ghana film industry. industry. I mean, those things are not brand names. But along the way, we've had brand names that have come to the table via um, popular usage or suggestions and all those things. But uh, the key thing to note is that at no point did Ghanaians, because the Ghanaian film industry belongs to Ghanaians, mm. and even filmmakers are Ghanaians. Mm. And my um, uh, uh, authority is focused on advancing Ghanaian filmmakers to the world. And so there hasn't been any time where Ghanaians have collectively said that this is what we want to be known as. And if you look at... Um, the importance that Ghana as a country and all the tribes of Ghana, the importance we place on uh, naming and names and all of that, that just gives you the in-depth understanding of our people to the name that you carry. Because a name uh, in marketing, but even in life, a name embodies your spirit, it embodies your call, your future, your cry, your, your, your ethos, your pathos, all of those things. And we haven't done that as a deliberate act. Um, when Tony was speaking, he said something. He said uh, the cinema culture has gone down, which is true. Ghanaians, I would put it this way, um, the film industry may have lost our audience. And our primary audience is Ghanaian. So when I say uh, lost our audience, I mean Ghanaians. And we need to go back to Ghanaians, court Ghanaians, um, and, and ask Ghanaians to come back to us, so to speak, and, and part of that is getting Ghanaians involved in the process of transformation. So you see that in picking uh, a name, uh, we asked all of Ghanaians to partake, which in itself was interesting because suddenly then you could see the excitement among Ghanaians and how many, entries, know, how many entries? How many entries? Uh, we had, uh, I think, over 500, four or 500 names. entries. Names. Suggested, wow. And then, um, and this was interesting because people from all over the country just went in and put in names that they thought uh, was, was very, um, was appropriate to, to propel the sector. And then the, the, the committee, the abled committee chaired by Professor Audrey Gajepo, narrowed it down to 10. And with the 10, uh, we again went back to Ghanaians and asked people to select. And within that, we had over 2,000 uh, uh, people coming back. Uh, and then the name was narrowed down last week, which is, you know, exciting. Uh, so why are we doing this? All of the reasons I've already stated. But, um, you know, we need a name that identifies who we are, where we are going, a name that all Ghanaians can identify with and feel proud of. Uh, a name that all filmmakers can use and feel proud of. At least a name that people feel that they play their part uh, in, in, in choosing the name. And that's, that's uh, the purpose of it. And if you look at um, the strategy of the National Film Authority, the strategy is to position Ghana as a film uh, destination, a content hub, and a shooting location. Uh, broken down, if anyone around the world wants to shoot anything, especially in Africa, we want them to head to Ghana. Ghana. If anyone wants to co-produce, we want them to head to Ghana. If anyone wants to do anything around content, we want them to head to Ghana. And so to make that happen, then you need a, 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 a deliberate action uh, to start that entire enterprise. And that's what we're starting with, we are the starting rebranding. With, yes. And my final, my, of course, final words, but from an actor, from mm -hmm. an actor to a CEO mm. of the Film Authority. Is that Also an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, and a director, I must say. Right, and a uh, writer. <laughs> there you go. Is there a future for our industry? Is there a future? It's Brief, be the future is beautiful. Even when you are gone. I can tell you, the future is beautiful. I mean, um, look, at, look at, first of all, the creativity of, Af of Ghanaians. 
Um, I tell between inside my ears. <laughs> the thing our time is up. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, but then one word I can say is that the future is really bright, and we encourage all filmmakers uh, to have faith. Um, to be interested. We encourage all filmmakers uh, to adopt and accept the name that Ghanaians have chosen. Uh, we, our mantra is together we build. We cannot do this alone. We cannot do this without filmmakers. We cannot do this with Ghanaians. And I want to use the platform to appeal to Ghanaians um, to again uh, uh, fall in love with the, film, the film sector industry. because some great work is coming out and I can assure Ghanaians that they will be proud of the sector that they call their own as they already I have want, been uh, uh, you know and, and will continue to be I want to take Tony's last words but Tony forgive me my, my boss will beat me in my ears but uh, we, are, we, are, we are unveiling the name tonight we where, are, where, where is it happening? It's happening at the Gold Coast Lounge right behind the Tourist Information Center Ah, right. Yes. at 6pm? At 6pm at 6 it's exciting isn't it? Everyone the is Invited? Well, everyone is not invited uh, because of COVID, COVID protocols. But if anyone feels passionate enough, especially if you're a filmmaker uh, or a film lover or a film uh, participant or whatever, or even if you're a Ghanaian but you feel so strongly about this, you can you can come by. But are we are we going to stream on Facebook for those? We who are, are going to stream it on Facebook. But the, um, you know, all our social media pages is National Film Authority. Authority. So whether it's on. Um, Twitter, whether it's on uh, uh, you know Instagram or Facebook, Facebook. and our website is www.nfa.gov.gh. So Wonderful. there's a lot of information there. Ooh, uh, this time is so short for us to have this discussion. Let me take just one comment coming on WhatsApp. The GH movie industry is doing the best. Cause nothing under the sun is perfect, but they should put much effort and use of our culture in filming, nor not the Western life style um okay that's arguable but thank you very much for that comment and i'd like to say a very big thank you to you ceo of national film authority and chair of the national and television film institute madame juliet yasanto asante and to you tony asankoma gh movie freak i'll see you tonight uh, at the unveiling thank you so much bro i appreciate it you are still watching <laughs> There you go. You're still watching the AM Club live on MX24 TV, coming to you from our Silicon Square studios here in East Legon. Up next is Fashion Wednesday, and Lali Lati is there to plug you in. But in a, in a while, here is a song by Kwame Eugene Fujin Sakot.